No region of the country lives on the freeway like Southern California. Our most crowded freeway, the 405, is getting a big upgrade after a half century of service. This weekend, millions who don't even drive the 405 will find out just how important the freeway has become to their lives. Some are calling it Carmageddon. This weekend, Los Angeles will see something it's never seen before. Part of the 405 freeway will shut down. The river of cars, trucks, and motorcycles will stop flowing between the west side and the San Fernando Valley. In Sepulveda Pass, the freeway lanes will go silent for 53 hours, from Friday night until Monday morning. A normal summer weekend would see 500,000 drivers on this stretch of freeway. This weekend will be anything but normal. One kind of thinks this is a sort of existential threat to, to motorized uh, Los Angeles. In Los Angeles, momentum means everything. Forward movement is, is important to our self-identification uh, because they fear the loss of that little bit of momentum uh, that will be taken away when the freeway is closed. If drivers don't heed warnings to stay off the road, freeways could jam up from Costa Mesa to Castaic. Traffic could spill off the freeways onto city streets and into quiet neighborhoods and canyons. Delays, say officials, could last for hours. All this is so demolition crews can begin tearing down the Mulholland Drive overpass. The bridge at the top of Sepulveda Pass provides access to schools, cultural centers, and hillside neighborhoods. We built a huge freeway system and, uh, in the 1950s and 60s, and it's getting old. So part of it is trying to upgrade that freeway system, but part of it is we just have to rebuild and reconstruct it. Project manager Mike Barber guarantees the work will be done on time. The contractor has added help to work day and night, hoping to avoid the worst case scenario, the freeway closure continuing past the weekend. At midnight Friday, the clock starts ticking. Real chaos and serious economic loss could result if 10 lanes of freeway aren't open as promised at 5 a.m. on Monday. It's a high wire act with no net and the world will be watching. We sit in traffic so much. I think I was reading just the other day that uh, Angelinos lose about four days a year stuck in traffic. I carry oranges, uh, you know, uh, produce, fish, whatever, whatever's coming, you know. Everybody wear different, you know. Some people wear for miles or hours. To me, it's for trips, you know. Money and uh, time. Yeah, because if you want to make a little couple of trips, you want to make maybe one, you know, and all day, take all day long, you know. Take uh, four or five, five, you know, but on weekends going to be hard, four or five. We're going to try to do the best we can, you know. Southern California's freeways are essential lifelines. They make living here possible. If you think of Los Angeles County as a collection of uh, geographic islands on the land, then the freeways are the, the threads that tie together all of those, uh, those islands. It's the texture that holds us together. Los Angeles is the only big city split by a mountain range, the Santa Monica's. The 405 pierces that divide, linking the beaches in West LA with the San Fernando Valley home to 1.7 million people. As everyone knows who commutes on the 405, it's one of the country's most congested freeways. It connects Orange County and San Diego with the rest of the West Coast. The 405 serves the nation's largest seaport complex at San Pedro and Long Beach. And it's the main route to Los Angeles International Airport for millions of travelers every year. The 405 is so crucial in the life of Southern California that a single event can cause widespread disruption on and off the freeway. I 
realized that it was going to affect me as far as um, um, when I was due because I'm very anxious and I'm ready to meet my son. I don't want to take the chance of going into labor that weekend of the closure and have to try and figure out how to get to the hospital on time and fight the traffic as well. For everyone from commuters to soccer moms to surfers at Santa Monica Beach, the 405 is a force of nature they must contend with daily. If it doesn't work right, LA doesn't work right. In a funny sort of way, the freeway is like the weather or the ocean or the sky. Uh, it's, it's there always. It, it, it is one of the large things in the landscape and, and how it is on any given day uh, may shape how uh, our day went. But something's being done to help commuters. It's a joint project of Caltrans, the agency that maintains California freeways, and Metro, the bus and transit agency. They're adding a carpool lane from Interstate 10, the Santa Monica Freeway, up through Sepulveda Pass to the 101, the Ventura Freeway in Sherman Oaks. They're taking three years to do it, and they're getting a little over $1 billion in federal, state, and local funding to pay for it. Uh, the federal is about, total is about $370 million. Uh, the local is about $13 million, and the, uh, the state is about $614 million. That billion dollars is going to buy a lot more than an HOV lane. First, to add the carpool lane, the 405 has to be widened with new shoulders and a center median. It will create a continuous HOV lane from Orange County to the Valley. Bridges at Sunset Boulevard, Skirball Drive, and Mulholland Drive are being replaced. On and off ramps are being modernized to help smooth out traffic at three major bottlenecks at Wilshire Boulevard, Sunset, and Santa Monica Boulevard. And other fixes made to bring the freeway into the 21st century. All this work requires an intricate feat of engineering to erect massive retaining structures on the sides of the canyon, with anchors sunk deep into the rock. A 96-inch water main, oil pipelines, and other utilities have to be moved. More than a thousand workers are on the job, with most of the work done at night to keep traffic moving. Yeah, the biggest problem here is it's definitely traffic. Um, you know, every everything we do is involves traffic. To widen the freeway, the bridge has to be torn down and rebuilt with a longer span. It's not safe to break it down in pieces, you know, over one, the northbound side to the southbound side. The work's being done in halves, so the two lanes of traffic always remain. The south side of the bridge will be demolished this weekend and rebuilt over the next 11 months. Then crews will tackle the north side. And there's the transition from the eastbound 10 as you're heading from Santa Monica or anywhere from the west side and going downtown. There's the transition, the eastbound 10, you take that ramp up and over to the northbound side of the 405. And I always call that the nightmare in the sky. Uh, this jackknife big rig was right at the bottom of that transition, maybe, you know, a little ways up. Well, those people were stuck there for five hours. So then, of course, we instead of pack a snack, we now have pack a porta potty, pack a suitcase. It's kind of gone on and on. There's so many things you can pack if you have to go on the freeways, but especially the 405. I think with, uh, with looking ahead, if people prepare, it's not that bad of a thing. Look for alternative measures for getting around the, uh, around the shutdown. I think they've certainly given the residents of the, of the areas more than enough time to plan. No freeway upgrade has ever been publicized the way this one has. You know, our, our message is very clear. You know, unless you really have to be in this area, you should stay away from it. You know, we really hope you go as far east as you can. You know, avoid the downtown, even the 110. Go, you know, past the 110 if you can. Another message, use public transit. Metro subways are free this weekend, and buses and trains have been added to the schedule. I can't think of, of any area that would be more difficult Look at the agencies preparing for this weekend's closure. Metro, Caltrans, the California Highway Patrol, the Los Angeles Police and Fire Departments. The presence of all that brass tells you how seriously officials are taking the threat of Carmageddon. This, you've got the, the most experienced people on board on this project. Um, we don't get together like this unless it's a major incident. There's a tremendous amount of time and effort has gone into the planning. Senior officials plan to monitor the situation all weekend at an integrated command center. The unified command that'll all be together throughout the weekend will make real-time decisions. This isn't working, we need to adjust. 
Provisions are being made for safety personnel to spend the weekend in hotels or in empty residence halls at UCLA. The city's automated traffic surveillance and control system is staffed up for the weekend to adjust stoplights and deploy traffic officers to keep intersections clear. We're going to deploy uh, 308 traffic officers a day and we'll have them out on three shifts uh, beginning at 11 o'clock on Friday evening and uh, we're going all through the weekend up until uh, 0600 on Monday morning. The mobility is going to be the issue with this closure. The reason we closed it between a 10 and a 101 freeway was we needed that area for potential evacuation or a catastrophic event. That's one of the reasons why we closed that section down. I would describe it as a major inconvenience for the community that we are all going to have to, to live with for 53 hours. That's what this is. But communities in Sepulveda Pass fear the 405 closure will be more than an inconvenience. Um, I imagine that Beverly Glen and Topanga Canyon and even the 101 south into Los Angeles are going to be quite uh, clogged up. But uh, in the what I consider the 80-20 rule of almost everything, 20% of the people who are going to try and get over the hill are not going to be getting that message. And they're going to pile on to the streets all around Sepulveda uh, in both the west side and over here in the Sherman Oaks and Sino area. But I imagine that this could, in fact, become a 53-hour gridlock situation. If this were anywhere else, the cars would simply be directed off the freeway, detoured around the bridge, and steered back on a mile later. And we're having this conversation because we all recognize how significant this particular issue is because of the area where it's occurring. Well, what happens if Caltrans is right and we have 32 miles of backup south and 32 miles of backup north? How will we get first responders to a critical need within the community? And what they came up with was we won't. Fearing total gridlock, the LAPD and other city officials plan to pre-deploy police officers, fire trucks, and paramedics in neighborhoods affected by the closure. All the way up to the 118 and, and all the way down to uh, the 105, um, it lessens. The divisions won't be that far. We have motorcycle officers to make sure traffic is being facilitated because what happens in those areas will impact the impacted area in terms of between the 101 and the 10. If you know the area, you might think you'll take Sepulveda Boulevard think again. It's going to be closed to all but local traffic. There's only one road that parallels the freeway. If Sepulveda be, does become an issue, there are contingencies to make sure that uh, we can handle Sepulveda in such a manner where we may have to reduce its the amount of volume that's going in over there through signalization, or we may have to shut it down completely. And so should there be a heart attack, or should there be a traffic accident, or should there be a call for service for the police department, we're going to be there. Traffic won't be just a west side problem. Drivers trying to escape freeway jams are expected to flood through city streets, making all travel difficult. It could be so bad in terms of traffic that the black and whites can't get through. If we need to get to the community, we'll get there with motorcycle officers. And to up the ante even more, the shutdown isn't the only game in town that weekend. On Saturday, the 16th, there's an event at the Coliseum that's supposed to draw 90,000 people for a soccer game. And those 90,000 people have to get to the Coliseum. The 405's biggest single traffic headache is LAX. The airport is seven miles from the nearest freeway closure, but 20,000 employees need to come to work over the weekend. And as many as 340,000 passengers will arrive or depart on flights. For many of them, the 405 is the main way in or out. Airport officials are blanketing terminals, the web, and travel agents around the world with information on the 405 shutdown. We're hoping this campaign of stay away and stay at home is going to be effective. If you go on the MTA website, there's a countdown clock that counts down the seconds and minutes and hours and days to the closure of the freeway. It is a bit like the doomsday clock or maybe uh, uh, the opening scenes of the, of the movie Independence Day. Because there really isn't going to be an alternate. There's, they've got a little list. You can go on to uh, metro.net and they have uh, the detour maps. You can look at they're, they're doing a great job at trying to analyze how all this is going to be, but it's all a lot of crap because none of it's going to work. With a project this big and complex, there are winners and losers. 
we have very concentrated people who, are, who are, have something to lose and very dispersed people who have something to gain. On the west side of Los Angeles, people go to sleep and wake up to the roar of the 405. The freeway is a major source of air pollution, spewing small particles that lodge deep in the lungs. Those people might actually enjoy the quiet this weekend. And one of the difficulties we have with the um, major construction project is that we tend to have very geographically focused losers. And we don't mean loser like my teenage daughter would mean, you know, that there's nothing about that. It means that they're paying a price. So you have people living adjacent or working adjacent to the facility who might have to be relocated, who might find the freeway moving a bit closer to them, who might find uh, construction disruptions lasting for a long period of time. For one beautiful weekend, living right next to the 405 won't be so bad. It will be quieter and no pollution will be flying off the freeway. The losers are anyone who needs the 405 to get around or to make a living. We build here and we install all around the Los Angeles area. This particular uh, job site is all the way up on Mulholland near near Coanga, Barham area, you know, right off the 101. So it, it eats up a, a day and a half of our time just to get there and, and unload. With the work being done, it's gonna be, it's gonna be really difficult. Then if the side streets are so glutted because the main thoroughfare is not, not functional, then we simply, we just can't get there. Businesses along the 405 corridor are anticipating millions of dollars in lost sales. I think it's, and for, for like for us, it will be closed during that time. Uh, we'll have a weekend off and have some time off, and then of course make that up in the following weekend when we'll be busier as well. Business losses can add up fast over a summer weekend. The event side, the catering, conference services side, that's being affected for sure. I mean, just for our, our hotel, if we had full of, you know, four or five events that weekend as we normally did, would, I mean, a couple hundred thousand dollars, hundred fifty thousand dollars, uh, up to, if depending on the, you know, if they're big weddings, big events. So if you multiply that by the hotels, I mean, it's it's millions of dollars. The Getty Center and the Skirball Center, both located in Sepulveda Pass, are closing for the weekend. UCLA's Ronald Reagan Medical Center the top trauma center in the affected area is mobilized for full operation. So we will be adding some additional staff uh, to make sure that if we have sick calls or other, other problems in getting staff in because of the closure, that we'll make sure that we have additional staff on site. The other uh, insurance is that if we have an emergency, if we have a Metrolink type of an event or some other catastrophic event in the community, that we have to be prepared for an emergency surge of patients from the community that we have additional staff here at our facilities to make sure that we can respond to that effectively. Some staff will stay overnight in residence halls to be nearby in case of emergency and the medical center's rooftop helipad could be in use too. The economic impact of the shutdown may never be calculated but between the business losses and extra municipal resources being spent the hidden costs are well into the millions. The 405 work will deal out plenty of collective pain, but for some, there's a silver lining. My name is Jenny Simon. I'm the chef and owner of Sugar Cube Cafe of uh, Roscomel Road and Bel Air. We, we have a, a meal called uh, Espresso Meal, which is a ready-made uh, cold soup and uh, cold sandwich and a salad, a ready-to-go packed in the box, and, uh, and a lot of cold drinks um, that we can too. Our normal clientele are, uh, well, let's just say the rich and famous. Uh, but we thought for the 405 shutdown, we'd offer a service to the general public and also to companies that uh, have time-critical people that need to get over the hill. So we're going to have a shuttle from our office here at Van Nuys Airport by helicopter to the west side to LAX, Santa Monica and uh, Hollywood and downtown. People can go one way or round trip. I'm anticipating that people will call just to take the ride. There's even a Carmageddon website and a Twitter feed if you're interested in local deals. The freeway traffic on the 405 to me is the only disaster we have where people don't come together. The 405 freeway is a physical feature of the landscape as much as the Pacific Ocean, and it may have as much impact on how people feel about their lives on a given day. The 405 divides neighborhoods, but it wasn't always that way. The freeways aren't simply infuriating transportation corridors for a, 
a motorized uh, Anhelenios, they really replicate the history of transportation throughout the entire period of uh, human habitation in, in Los Angeles County. They're the, the routes of the, of the Native Americans who passed through in the Paleolithic period. They're, they're the routes of Spanish conquest in the, in the uh, late uh, 18th century. They're history in the landscape. The freeway opened in 1962 through Sepulveda Pass. With the freeway, people in the valley could get to the beach in 20 minutes, and it opened up Westwood Village to high-rise development. The west side grew into its own downtown, with LA's busiest intersection, Wilshire and Westwood Boulevards. The development of West LA is, uh, is much higher density than, than, than many people outside of Los Angeles understand. And over the years, as West LA has grown, as Los Angeles has grown, as traffic on the 405 has expanded, that traffic delay has expanded temporally. Congestion has expanded out of the peak times to cover 15 hours a day on average and spill over onto streets like Wilshire Boulevard. All of the road system the arterials, the collectors, the freeways are operating at or near capacity. Many people are shocked to learn that, uh, that the New York urbanized area, uh, which is the contiguous urbanization around New York, is actually has a lower population density than the Los Angeles urbanized area. But the suburbs of New York are much lower density than the suburbs of Los Angeles. Los Angeles traffic is not caused by what you think. And so many people think that there's a lot of traffic congestion in Los Angeles because people drive so much. People actually drive less in Los Angeles than in the typical metropolitan area, and they use transit more. L.A. has the second most transit riders in the country. In other words, our traffic is not just a factor of too many cars. The traffic is so heavy here because the population employment densities are higher. We would normally be you know, a suburb of the downtown area, and yet we have downtown-like densities around here. And that's part of the reason why congestion is so heavy on the west side. Even after the 405 project is finished, rush hour will still be bumper to bumper. But there should be fewer hours of congestion on a typical day. With the freeway running smoother, traffic should flow more easily on Wilshire and other streets. But congestion, it's here to stay. Are we going to have free flow congestion on the surface streets? Not at this level of development activity, no. Not with Century City and Westwood and UCLA uh, and the variety of other sort of dramatic employment generators we have and the, the increased density of housing. Even if we have more people carpooling and more people biking and more people using public transit, the limited road space is, is likely to be congested a lot of the time from here on out. What about rail? Not viable in Sepulveda Pass. Toll lanes were considered, but they're not as politically tolerable as carpool lanes. Um, no matter what they do, uh, there will be need, there'll, there'll need to be another fix in another decade, another fix, another fix, another fix. We will never solve the problem of transportation in Los Angeles County. We'll never solve the problem of the freeways in Los Angeles County. But on the 405, a uh, guy was uh, towing his boat and uh, he's just, you know, whizzing along and kind of looks up to the left and all of a sudden sees his boat because he's starting to slow down in traffic. His boat was actually making better time than he did. It came off the thing. His boat got down to Long Beach, I think, before he did. They had to shut down the freeway then, actually, for about oh, maybe 24 hours. You're not going to be delayed if you don't get on a freeway that weekend, you know? You just stay home and uh, try to find something to do for that weekend and it's boys of freeways. I'm not planning to come, to come this way. <laughs> There's a chance we don't get this right, and Southern California grinds to an agonizing halt, where 53 hours will feel like 53 days. At the end of the day, we shouldn't really be talking about the inconvenience as much as we're talking about we need to, we need to be safe. Part of it is that uh, how, uh, how seriously people take the warnings to adjust their behavior. If enough of them do it, I think that we might have surprisingly small effects. Or enough of us could stay home that it turns out like the 1984 Olympics. Back in 1984, we told ourselves that life was going to be terrible because of the Olympics uh, arrival and that we should do something about it, and we did. And a lot of companies and others made voluntary changes in their behavior to try and accommodate things. And what happened is, is the day the Olympics opened, we found the traffic on freeways was at some of its lowest level in decades. We may get lucky, 
we may have a Olympic miracle. Hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll be okay. Everything's gonna be fine. A lot of people worrying for nothing. It's gonna be tough. I'm from a farm uh, in Missouri, so uh, I'm used to a rural area and there is no traffic because there's nowhere to go. I, I always appreciate that here there's a lot of traffic because you have somewhere to go. Now uh, keep in mind they're saying that the 405 is going to reopen on Monday at 5 a.m. in time for everyone to go back to work for their work week. If that happens, great. If not, we'll be here. I just hope that um, everything goes as they're hoping that it does and I can get to the hospital without any problems <laughs> and at least uh, some family members can see, come see me and uh, everything works out great and then Monday morning there's no traffic. Either way, we get to do it all again. Remember, only half of the Mulholland Bridge is coming down this weekend. Next year, it's the other side. No matter what, this will be a memorable weekend along the 405 and across Southern California. Uh, if something's going to happen, it's going to be big. Uh, it, it will change their lives for uh, several days running. Stay at home, make plans, watch movies, have barbecues at home, uh, get to know your family again. Whether the 405 closure goes off smoothly or becomes a midsummer's nightmare, one thing's for sure. For one weekend, Los Angeles will slow way down. Some of us will feel the pain, but with a little luck, many of us will be able to enjoy a restful break from our normal high-tempo lives. For one weekend, we can park the car, take a walk, play close to home. The 405 shutdown doesn't have to be like a bad dream. It's also a chance to sit back, relax, and enjoy the slow.